Okay, folks, what an action-packed week this is going to be. This is Bitcoin. It's very much on track. We've got the SP500. We've got the stock market. We've got the Nasdaq. This is going to be a big week coming up uh, because you know why? We've said this for a long time. The Federal Reserve is making in their decision Wednesday next week, which is the, th the 14th. And 13th, we'll get the CPI, the uh, inflation data. These are all going to be heavy hitters for the market. But how is the market standing right now? How is it lining up? right now so this is Pablo Heyman once again coming to you from the Bahamas mate Bahamas Bahamas and uh, hey is that big boy big boy anyways okay so without further ado let's get right into it um, okay so let's see uh, do, 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 do. okay if you've been watching my videos this is uh, a quick update for the folks in my discord I've been comparing the current trajectory we're in for Bitcoin similar. This is a four hour chart, four hour chart, similar to the daily chart of uh, Bitcoin around May to July last year. And I was expecting a breakout two videos ago and uh, then it broke out and I said and pulled back. I said one more pull back and then we pump again, probably about 18.2, that area. So far, it's kind of on track. The just to recap you guys quickly uh, the here's the daily uh, oh yeah here's the daily what I've done here is it looks kind of similar huh see big drop then we have a you know a downward triangle and then a breakout so I essentially just took this pattern here right uh, as a uh, uh, what you call it a this thing a what they call a fractal I just took a fractal of of what happened in uh, in you know August last year after this uh, this major major uh, you know pattern around May to July. This is when Bitcoin was at 30k, right? And a lot of people, including myself, thought it was going to 20, but then it pumped up instead. So if we took that if we took that uh, uh, fractal and put it on the four, not the daily but the four hour chart. Right, the four hour chart, what we get is this. Um, this is what I've been doing for the last two videos, these longer videos that I make for my Discord. And um, originally I thought this was gonna be the breakout, it faked out here, and then it pumped again. I thought, okay, maybe this is the one, it'll pull back and then pump up again. So far it's following the, uh, the trajectory and uh, could get to 18.2, that's what I'm uh, looking at. Although, nothing is guaranteed you know this is just one scenario if you are gonna go long and short don't take my advice for it um, have some stops to protect yourself if we're wrong so the other thing we're saying is that the SP 500 so for example the S&P uh, the spider has been my theory has been that the spider if you watch the last video that I made I said the spider would essentially make hit this massive trend line here top of the channel pull back and then eventually bounce through uh, this line obviously is key for it to hold right and then uh, this line or even this zone around 391 for it to bounce off and to go up so I'm expecting 415 to 425 that's probably the eventual target before we pull back um, could even get to as high as about 430 area so I'd be selling some stocks if we got to around that area doesn't mean that's the top you know nothing's 100% in trading but that's that's how I see it right now I think there is enough um, uh, news to for the SP 500 to break through this channel to break up and then everyone will be like oh it's a bull market it's a bull market and not really that's when probably somewhere in maybe um, first quarter second quarter of 2023 that's when the big, uh, big drop really comes okay so um, which da data points so so far we're still on track um, and all of this by the way all of this could change easily by about say um, say next Tuesday or Wednesday because one we have the CPI inflation number And two, we have the all-important Fed decision. It's the speech that we're, that's going to be important. They say they'll hike 50 points, but where do they say the, the terminal rate is? Do they think inflation's coming down? 
Are they going to keep the terminal rate higher for longer? What's the decision? Okay, so um, a couple of charts I'd like to look at is this. So for example, a lot of people have been talking about this. So this is the CBOE or Chicago Board of Trade. Um, equity put and call ratios. So the puts versus calls, right, has hit like a 24 year high, almost a quarter of a century. The amount of puts versus amount of calls, right, has hit a 24 year high. So which means the market potentially is very bearish, right? That would mean the market is very bearish right now. Puts versus calls hit a 24 year high. High, not since 1998. Look at that. That's the result that came out yesterday. But I have to warn everyone not to take it too literally. Why? There are a number of reasons. Uh, first of all, it's not just people buying a lot of puts, but people, if you look at the put volume, it's actually the black line, it's actually gone down. People are not buying a lot of puts. It's just that people are not buying a lot of calls. See the call volume? has fallen off even more sharply. So I guess in a way you could still say that's kind of like a, um, a uh, you could still say that's sort of like a the market being very bearish because they're buying, a, they're not buying a lot of puts. The, as we saw, the, the amount of puts they're buying actually went down, but they're buying even less calls. So it's not that they think the market is gonna crash. It's just that they don't think the market's going to go up much. So therefore, put an option, put versus call options are at a historical, you know, uh, historically out of balance level. But the other thing to keep in mind is this. CBOE, Chicago Board of, uh, you know, Exchange, is only one out of like 15 exchanges in the US. You have the New York Stock Exchange, the NASDAQ, you know, uh, you have a number of these exchanges. And third of all, keep in mind is this. This is a daily chart. Right, that was a daily chart. What we just saw in the <clears throat> when there's a spike, right in that trading volume. What often happens is that um, a lot of the a lot of the puts and calls people buy, something like forty five percent of the puts and calls that are traded have like a have like a have a zero day to maturity. Which means basically it will expire within 24 hours. It's a very short term bet. It's a very short term bet on which way the market is going. So it's basically people are betting on Thursday, you know, uh, which just passed. What will happen on Friday? Um, you know, it's not a long term call for like, or even medium term call, like saying, where's the stock market going in three months, in six months, in say um, two years from now? So I would take that indicator with a big grain, huge grain of salt. Um, but however, let's look for more evidence to see if we can back that up. So don't take that, what I've just shown you, too seriously because I've given you three very good reasons why it's not reliable. It just goes to show you really have to know what you're talking about where else you, you see a chart and you go, oh yeah, the market's really bearish, so we should buy right now. However, if we look at uh, the sentiment, market sentiment. So for example, um, this is a double A, double A, Double AII sentiment, you know, uh, indicator, and uh, since we got into December, it has been really uh, bearish, right? Um, not overly so, but it's been like this for the for the last four weeks. The bears have only grown a little bit. Bulls have lost more ground. Most people are going neutral. Most people are going neutral. Like, well, many more people. See where where you have 33% of bulls, now you only have 24%. Where did the bulls go? They went into the neutral camp. Only 1.5% went into the bearish camp. So people are kind of neutral, not much more bearish than before. But like we, what we just saw on that options chart, people are not bullish anymore, right? There are less bulls, not too many more bears, but there are a lot more people now who are neutral-ish. So... Um, for now, basically, I'm sticking to my view that I think with the help of a, you know, lower than expected CPI number, or even if it comes out on expectations, and then if we have a, a say, a Fed that is um, hinting they might slow, uh, you know, down the rate, uh, 
the, the, the uh, you know, slow down hiking rates, then we could easily have a pop above here and then everyone think, oh, bull market is back. But that's probably when you need to sell around, say, 415, 425. Might even get to slightly above to about 430, somewhere here. Right, probably goes down another leg. Um, we've we've held that theory for the last um, like two videos now, which is like last 14 days. So how, let's see how that plays out. Uh, another thing we need to be aware of is this. So this is uh, glass node. Now this is Bitcoin's percentage balance on all exchanges, all exchanges. So the number of you know there's 17 million Bitcoins that have been mined, or is it 19 million, something like that, and then of those bitcoins right we see that here uh during its height basically something like uh 17 percent of all those bitcoins that have been mined went on exchanges that's because see here that was a massive sell-off this was the COVID panic of march 13th 2020 and basically there was a rush and you know uh, a lot of bitcoins went on exchanges to sell off because the COVID was crashing the economy uh, and then since then a lot of them have left the exchange because we've gone into a bull market people are thinking I'm not gonna sell I'm not gonna sell and then as we <clears throat> crash down to 30k right people brought that bitcoins back onto the exchange to sell and then you know people brought more back bitcoins back to sell but here's the thing as Bitcoin price has gone down the number of people putting the percentage bitcoins on the exchanges has also gone down right so it's not a reliable indicator telling you that that just because just because people you know i was drawing coins see here from here from say december 28th to now it's been one downtrend just because it's been in the downtrend doesn't mean people are not selling bitcoins because you still have even today right even today you still have around 12 percent of all bitcoins are on exchanges so it's they can still sell it however um what i want to you guys to notice is this see here that was the when Bitcoin crashed from say 21k to 15.5 around here that was the FTX crash caused by FTX going bankrupt but do you see the position the percentage of Bitcoins on exchanges went from 13% right down to right down to 12% so 1 13th that's like 11% it's like 10, sorry that's like oh sorry one third, that's like 8% of all those bitcoins and exchanges just got withdrawn into cold wallets or whatever so what that means is there are less there's suddenly less ex bitcoins on these ex exchanges to sell there's lesser possibly lesser selling pressure unless we get a a massive um, uh, you know bad news event like say uh, grayscale uh, announces they're going bankrupt and they have to sell half a million or well, 600,000 bitcoins they own something like that we need an here's the exchange net position change okay we can see it from this angle as well so if we take it out to well so greens are when bitcoins are flowing onto the exchanges right and see when when it's flowing there at a peak rate that's when that's when bitcoin price topped right when people was drawing bitcoins in a massive right see this red thing here then we're close to a bottom this is 2015 bear market then see here 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 a lot of coins went in that was 2018 right so again bitcoin topped crashed down and then we have another huge red bar here people was drawing bitcoins so that kind of became around 7.9 thousand again mark the start of a new you know uh bitcoin run again here and here people was drawing bitcoins this is when bitcoin was around what eleven thousand, and it's had a 7x run since then now this recent withdrawal in terms of intensity is huge essentially within a space span of like like about uh about say three weeks with the f since the ftx has collapsed people has drawn a large amount of bitcoins so what i'm saying is we can't always expect bitcoin to go oh it's going to go to 12k 8k 5k in one hit because sometimes these bad things happen and it actually helps 
Bitcoin in terms of holding its price because people are withdrawing Bitcoins off the exchanges. It's not a reliable indicator as I had just shown you, but you know, just be, just be careful um, of short squeezes is what I'm saying. Another thing we could look at is basically see here. This data is from just yesterday, Thursday, by the way. Um, sorry, this is from Thursday, United States, US time. Um, and by the way, um, I put this uh, video, these videos to my Discord first. After about two days, I put it out to the public. So when the public sees this, it's probably, probably like Saturday or Sunday already. Okay, so uh, we can see that as Bitcoin made it a bounce yesterday, see here, uh, where was Bitcoin? As BTC made a bounce yesterday, here, uh, yeah, from 16,000 to around 17.2, basically we can see that, let me enlarge it even more, okay, uh, we can see that on the exchanges, for example, Binance, OKEX, right, the funding rate, the futures funding rate should be 0.1% if it's neutral. This is a lot less than neutral, right, it's almost going negative. OKX going negative, uh, DYDX going negative, Bybit going very negative, which means people are still short. People are still very short at this level. So keep this in mind, guys. One, um, we do not have uh, a lot of Bitcoins on these exchanges. We have a lot less now. And two, people are, after a pump to 17.2K, people are still going very, very short. This all sets up for a short-term squeeze, short squeeze. Um, I'm not saying 100% it'll happen, but it, it, is, it is basically helping me to see if my scenario of this kind of fractal, as I've just shown you at the start of the video, will play out or not. Do we get one more squeeze up or not? Um, if it gets above 18.2 to 18.7 area, then we can see how important this whole support area is. Then um, it's gonna, uh, then basically can can actually run to about 21, 22 even, you know, and then and then crash back down. Um, this, as we can see, this 18.7 area is massive, massive support because it's massive. Sorry, massive, massive resistance because of massive, massive support before. If it can get above here, then a run to 21, 22 is entirely possible. Um, it all depends on the CPI and the Fed reaction to the CPI and the jobs data um, in by next Wednesday, I would say. Next Tuesday, next Wednesday. Um, one more thing we could possibly look at is Ethereum. Oh, this is ETH Bitcoin. ETH Bitcoin. <laughs> ETH Bitcoin looks like it could probably bounce off here and come down. So ETH might weaken against Bitcoin. Uh, let's have a look at ETH itself. Uh, okay. ETH, I've, as I've been saying in my Discord, basically this 1280, 1285 area is key for ETH to hold. Um, ETH, in my opinion, has made this big, we can see triangle this entire the last half a year ETH has basically been bouncing this is what like June 18th now where December 9th has been bouncing inside this large triangle or pennant some people might call it a pennant usually because it's it's been falling from 4,800 all the way into this pennant usually it tends to be a continuation pattern for it to go down that's the way I'm seeing it, um, to at, at least probably another test, retest of this 880 area. So, um, short term, basically, I've been telling folks that um, in my Discord, the way I see it, ETH is inside a jail or inside this box when it's below 1285, 1290 area. See, we've had these tops, three or four tops here. We've had like multiple bottoms here had a little top here so basically ETH is not bullish if it stays inside this box um, if it can break out and uh, confirm above here 13 17 17 13 17 13 15 area then I consider it's possible to run to this area which is around 1450 
If I can confirm here with a close or two, then 1450 is next target. For now, it's just been dancing below this 1285. So um, it is possible to get a retest back down to just below 1200 uh, or even even something like back to 1128 before it makes a next bounce up. So ETH um, probably in the short term, not as um, not as um, bullish as Bitcoin in my opinion. Um, okay, so again, these are these are not hundred percent. These are more like 60 70 percent probabilities to help put the odds in your favor. Like if you're a professional, uh, you know, sports better, and you bet on horses all the time, or you bet on you know football games all the time, you understand the probabilities are there if they're in your favor and um, you bet small amounts but you bet a lot like often frequently as a trader then the, those odds to end up leaning in your favor I'm not here to adv advocate for people to trade frequently or whatever I don't trade that frequently I'm more of an investor um, you know I take um, I take shots when I uh, when I see uh, something is is a high probability event so uh, such as you know the um, uh, the World Cup lately we saw um, as I was telling everyone about the Brazil and Spain coins and they both pump 8x after I made uh, that call both on social media and in my discord and I was hoping for them to pump up more um, including I didn't really think Chile's was going to go up that much more, but people wanted to, because it's the only thing that you can use futures and leverage and 100x, 200x leverage on. So people bought um, bought Chili's. Um, I was like, okay, I think it probably can make a new high. It didn't. It only got up to the old high, right, around 29 cents, right, which is still a pump, which is still like a 30% pump from when I spoke about it. Um, uh, Portugal and what's the name? Portugal and uh, Argentina both made new highs since I spoke about it. They, all, they both went up like 100% since I spoke. Um, Brazil and Spain both went up 8x since I spoke. And then when the World Cup came, people were asking, will they sell the news on this? I couldn't tell when they were going to sell the news. I said, is it at the start of the World Cup? Is it at the start of the first Brazilian game? Start of the first Spanish game? Or when they make the top 16? Or when they make the finals? I don't know when it's somewhere in 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 the middle of the um, of the competition. Um, I guess I should have been more um, uh, worded that better, as in somewhere in the competition rather than in the middle. I mean, it's like what, like a twenty-one days competition. So the peak isn't isn't exactly ten or eleven days in. It's somewhere in the middle of the competition. It's difficult to pick which one. But as I saw it going down, I sent out a lot of alerts saying I am short in Spain here because that's the only one you can use leverage on. Um, and um, basically, the short on Spain worked out, um, as I'm sure if you are watching any of my uh, on my Instagram or Twitter or if you are in my uh, Discord, you've seen it's made a 40x return. So if you had say a hundred dollars, if you bet on you know Spain or Brazil, you would have made being up 8x if even if you got out halfway you would have gotten out with 4x or 5x that's 500 bucks right and if you're putting another 100 bucks into uh to to go long spain or to go long brazil um and then you dollar cost average into that you put in 100 dollars 200 dollars 300 dollars and if you lost that all you'd probably still have one or 200 dollars left and if then if you went short uh spain you would have made a 40x return so that's how trading works. Um, if you gamble too heavily, just on like Spain or Portugal, thinking they're going to go all the way to win the World Cup, well, then you probably wouldn't be doing too well. So there are some um, some people who only listen to like one little part of what I say, but obviously my messages are there. Like I, I show you guys, I highlight it, underline what I actually written. It's all of my Twitter. It's in my Discord. It's on Instagram. You know. Um, some people don't listen to it. They just want to want to you know bet on one team and uh, go all the way. Well, good luck to them. Anyway, you follow the discipline and uh, you know learn the wisdom of investing, and that's why Pablo is um, you know relaxed on the beach. So, 
I don't think the bear market is finished yet. All of the predictions so far are only for the short term. Let's see how Bitcoin and um, uh, Ethereum and everything else, all the cryptos and stocks play out over the longer term. Okay, this is Pablo Jimenez. I'll catch you guys at the next meeting.